Hello, it's your boy Offie D, and I am going to bring you right now the highlights and most important parts of my playthrough of the grand campaign of Oriental Empires, playing as Wu. This is a civilization-like set in ancient China, where your basic goal is to build up your civilization and dominate your rivals. You can see we have various bonuses for playing as Wu right there, and I selected Wu for no particular reason, in case you were wondering. Because this is the Grand Campaign, we're playing on the historical map of China, which may make things a bit more familiar. As we start, we're immediately given a tip. It's essentially saying, don't bother going south because the terrain is not very good, and you can already see that it's covered in dense forests and mountains, and at the start of the game, which is supposed to be 1500 BC, we can't really deal with harsh terrain like that. We need to build our civilization in open space. To help us out, we start off with some settlers who will go and found our second city, aside from our capital. I'll explain some of the game's mechanics as I go along and as they become relevant, but broadly speaking it's like civilization, so for now we just want to get our settlers to a nice open space that's suitable for our new town. Going to pick somewhere that doesn't take too many turns to get to, since in these crucial opening turns, the more you can do, the better, and it will all spiral up to huge gains later on. And that means we want to not spend very long looking for somewhere good for our town to be. We've also got a few troops, as you can see, here's our faction leader actually, sitting around with some bodyguards, and we'll send him over the river as well, because there are tiles with those little yellow markers on them, which are special event tiles where if you send a character to go stand there, something good might happen. We can also raise a few troops to help defend our tiny empire, since even though we don't see any other players, there are randomly spawning hostile forces that appear across the map. I'm going to be playing with automated farming enabled. Normally you have to manually pick when and where to build farms around your settlements. We're not going to bother with that for the purposes of this campaign to speed things along a little bit, since I wouldn't have really done commentary on that anyway. We're going to send the unit we just recruited to the south to scout out terrain and see if there are any other factions down there. And the only other thing we need to do for our first turn is to set all of the tech trees going. There are four different tech trees, so we're researching all kinds of things at once. I won't bother going into the details of what I'm researching unless it's particularly important at a given moment, but basically it gives you various small buffs and unlocks to buildings that we'll be mostly making in the background. There's one example of a useful tech dimension, the one that allows you to clear forests, so given our starting position, we'll want to grab that right away. That will allow us to expand to the south, potentially at least. My apologies that the sound effect volume is too loud in this part and probably the next part of this campaign. It's because I'm definitely not an experienced YouTuber who's been doing this for years and definitely shouldn't be making this sort of mistake at this point. Okay, now bye. A couple of turns later, we discovered someone down there. The Min Yue are moving around with a group of settlers on the southern side of the forest to our south. So, my peasant scout's going to continue moving on to see what's down there. There's almost certainly another faction in the area. There's the confirmation that we now have contact with them, so we can do diplomacy with them if we want. And there's an example of the spawning enemies, the bandits essentially, that can attack our towns if we just set them up undefended. So we'll want to keep some troops nearby. In that case, our faction leader will suffice. I also realized I have the money to create another band of settlers at our capital Mei Li, and I thought we might as well, we want to start off as strongly as we can, so let's go with a three town start and see how that goes. Those settlers are going to be heading east out of our capital, we'll see them a bit more in a second. Right now, I need to look at the situation with my scouting spears, they've discovered that there are two bands of Min Yue settlers, and they appear to be heading northeast towards the area to the east of Mei Li that I was just thinking of colonizing. We can also see the edge of their territory, that little purple hex to the bottom. I'm going to do this the aggressive way. I'm just going to try and attack those settlers by declaring war on Min Yue to prevent them from getting their first town set up. That will give us a great advantage going forwards, and hopefully that war will be ultimately winnable. There's our second town going up. We've also gained a new officer, our faction heir. The whole leader heir system's a bit abstract since these events are supposed to be taking place over hundreds of years, but basically it's just a free powerful units that we can use in the defense of our kingdom, which will be vital early on while we don't really have many units. There are population caps and unit limits, and the fact that units cost upkeep that all prevent you from building too many units, especially at the beginning, so we'll be holding back. 
One thing I want to be doing in terms of building buildings is making bazaars. Now that we have multiple towns, we can use bazaars to trade between them and make ourselves some money. That's something I'll mostly not be commentating on, by the way. Here you can see my peasant spears are bamboozled. This game has simultaneous turns, so while I ordered them to attack the settlers, they moved to where the settlers were. You need to order them to go to where you think your target will be in the next turn, so I was uh, mistaken to have gone right at them, and now we'll have to pursue them through the forest as you can see here. Luckily we do get close enough to initiate a battle, so here's our first look at the battle system. All battles take place simultaneously, so if you have multiple fights you can't watch them all but we'll do our best and see what happens in this case there's not much of a battle to mention our peasant spears move up and start slaughtering these defenseless civilians this isn't the end of the story though it's not like in Civ where attacking settlers causes them to be defeated in this case they just rout routing through this field of uninterested birds the unit is still alive and can still potentially settle the second unit of settlers, by the way, also got drawn into the fight because it was nearby, so even though I was too far away to attack it, I can handily still fight them this turn, but as I said, this doesn't defeat them, it just routes them, it pushes them away and means we still have to pursue them, we'll have to defeat them three or four times to actually defeat them completely. It's a crushing victory according to our result, but I guess we didn't crush them enough, because yes, they are still alive. And now they've actually got more of a lead on us since they routed away, it's going to be harder to catch up with them. Overall, that battle has had no particularly positive consequences. However, our new band of settlers may be able to cut across and get ahead of the enemy troops or the enemy settlers before they get to that open fertile land and we can steal it before the enemy does. We've now got our first encounter here with our faction leader. But it's a bit disappointing. We have to pay a huge amount of money to increase our power research speed by 10%, which would be a great thing to have at the start of the campaign. That'll all accumulate into a huge advantage. But we don't have the money, so we can't do that right now, and we'll have to just move on. Although I think that guy might still be there in the future, so maybe I can go back to him and get that buff later. Not quite sure about that. I would have been able to afford it if I hadn't got these extra settlers. But having these extra settlers does pay off right now because we do make it to this good land before the enemy settlers do. I thought maybe I can recruit some peasant spears to attack the settlers from the front now, but we can't do that right away. What I am doing is building walls here because this is on the quote-unquote front line of our quote-unquote war. And this proves to be a big error that I later realised. Because actually in this game, your population has to work on building the things in towns. So by ordering them to build those walls, they now won't be able to farm and the town won't be growing for a long time while it's making the walls. So that's going to really hamper the advantage of having that early third town. Plus, the enemy aren't going to be attacking it anytime soon, so I needn't be so hasty to throw up walls. One thing we'll want to work towards is building keys in the river so that our towns can trade with each other more effectively. Roads would be nice at some point as well once we have the techs. Here's our second encounter and it's almost as disappointing as the first one. Whatever it was, we've missed it and the guy who was going to give us something is dead. All we can do now is lose some money and go to his funeral don't even have the option to refuse, and paying for the funeral causes us to now be in the negatives when it comes to gold. We've had pretty bad luck, I think, with these encounters so far. It's at times like these that we just have to think at least we're not the main US settlers who are once again being slaughtered. They've now got nowhere good to settle, so they're just wandering around and we'll keep chasing them down and trying to defeat them. Here we are one turn, one turn later. I headed over to the east to go after one group who routed through my men and were sufficiently slaughtered that now that unit is deleted and we've finally gotten rid of them. My faction leader found another encounter out in the northern plains. This time it's the chance to pay a teacher to improve our guy's stats. I'm going to go for this for no particular reason, didn't really know if it was good value or not. You can see your officers have two stats, it's very roughly speaking their military ability and their civil ability, which affects various things. If they're in an army like this guy, then it's his military ability that really matters. We also have authority. Authority is a key global stat for your faction. 
which I won't really talk about until it becomes relevant, but basically it limits how many settlements you can have. We currently have three settlements and two authority, so we are pushing the limits, and if we keep building settlements we'll get rebellions, so we'll need to slow down for a bit. More authority will appear in our pool once we've got some more techs, essentially, so it will just appear in the background and we'll carry on building up. In the meantime, best just keep slaughtering those enemy settlers. I was able to recruit a new unit of peasant spears from our capital. They moved south to attack that group that had gotten away from our first squad of spears. I then moved both squads to the south to go towards enemy territory, while our faction heir, who has come back to the capital to join our peasant spears, goes and finishes off those settlers somewhere in the woods. <laughs> Wasn't able to see it in that case. So his goal is going to be to move south and meet up with those two units of spears in order to conduct a war against our enemy, the Minua, and stop them from building up. We've already got some spears standing in their territory, and because they'd built farms on that tile, our spears will now loot the farm and give us some money automatically. That's very good stuff, and it, of course it stops the enemy from using the farm, so that's going to slow them down. The same thing can happen to us, and it is happening to us right now, up near our second town, Gusu. Many more bandits have appeared by the looks of things, and they're now starting to encroach on our territory. We can't recruit anything here because the population is still too low. That means all we have to defend is our faction leader and his bodyguards. So that will have to do. His noble axemen are much better than the peasant spears that the bandits have. So I thought let's go for it. Just charge out and try to stop the enemy from raiding our territory since that will set us back quite far if all our farms get taken out. Here he goes then. The enemy charge in to fight, and now it's just a brawl with no strategy whatsoever. And because our men are a bit better than theirs, we are going to be able to have a pretty good time there. While that was going on, I asked some of my peasant spears to move across the river to raid some more farms. However, the Minua army finally appears. They've got some bodyguards of their own who are quickly going to be able to take out these spearmen from us. On the other side of the fight is a spear on spear battle where we'll have a slight advantage because our spears leveled up a tiny bit, killing those settlers, giving them a tiny edge over the enemy. Back up with our faction leader, looks like victory has been had. He drove away both of the enemy spear units, taking a few losses, but the enemy probably took more, and no more farms will be raided. So it was just this fight left to conclude. You can see their axes have taken out my spears on our right flank, if you will. Well, we have won on our left flank, but we quickly just retreated back across the river and that was the end of the fight. That's fine because we still want to sit on our side of the river and wait for our own commander to show up to increase our combat potential, so no need to push in really to the enemy territory. At the end of the next turn though, those spearmen came back to challenge us once again. Our faction leader was still waiting around ready to fight, so in he goes. I wasn't worried until now when I realised we're not facing the two depleted units that we beat already. There's a third full strength unit joining the battle. Our faction leader's actually in trouble. He quickly routes one enemy unit there, then is stuck in battle with the second unit while the third one comes in to support, making this a big 10 on 1 mosh. We're totally outnumbered here. You can actually see my faction leader lying dead on the ground if you look very closely there, so that's good news, but it's not actually as dire as it seems, as you'll see in a second. As for the fight, well, it's just a grind. The enemies still have us outnumbered, but now it's only like 5 to 1 because some of the enemies routed. And long story short, we somehow win. The other unit routes as well, and we actually get away with this. Didn't really expect that in this case, but that is exactly what we need because we have nothing else to defend this area. This unit has to survive. And as it happens, I guess the rule is that if the unit doesn't die, your faction leader doesn't die. There's no announcement or anything, he's still there, so we can still keep going with this guy and defending this area. And all these victories he's racking up increases that authority stat I mentioned, which isn't particularly useful right now, but it might be at some point. His efficiency, his stamina I guess, is down to zero after that fight, so I'm going to send him back to town to rest. I'm going to be waiting around for a while as well with the Min Yue because I've got a couple more units in the unit pool for my recruitment right now, so I'm going to reinforce my army before I advance. Any veteran players might be noting that it is literally impossible for me to attack Kwai Ji right now, but I didn't know that at the time, <laughs> because I'm not very experienced, so let's let me discover that the hard way. 
You can also see that there are these various strategies you can give to units within armies. My prior experience was that the more you use these, the worse things go, and it's better to just tell everyone to charge in and hope you win. But perhaps we'll try some fancy tactics if and when the opportunities arise. Now, you might think that sending all of my newly available units to the southern campaign while we're actually being attacked in the north is a little bit edgy and hyper-aggressive, and yes it is, as will be attested to by my faction leader, who is now personally holding the line against what turns out to be in fact four units of bandits, they're still spawning. We managed to defeat one highly depleted unit from an earlier battle, but then our leader is promptly surrounded and routs. At least he wasn't killed, he's running away so can potentially survive. However, another unit of bandits happened to be walking to where he routes to, and so another battle is triggered. He immediately retreats, so there's still a chance here. But then, another unit triggers another battle, still going towards where he ended up. He appears to retreat even further, but at this point the game's just like, alright, you don't deserve to keep your faction leader, and he disappears. So we've finally done it, we've got the classic off-ED campaign start with the faction leader being killed, and now we're potentially in trouble, we now don't have anyone defending our northern border against those bandits. That faction heir is thus now the faction leader, you can see his authority is impacted by the succession, but because authority isn't an issue for us right now that doesn't really matter. In essence it changes your public order, but nowhere's near rebelling, so having public order debuffs right now is irrelevant. Moving on, I was able to recruit more units in Mei Li, so we can put together a little army with some spears, some long spears, a newly available unit, and some noble axemen to head to the north to defend Gusu against the bandits. Luckily those bandits were very unaggressive, they just hung around the peripheries, they didn't attack the ungarrisoned town, which would have been a disaster, so we were able to arrive in time for a battle. The problem is, as the number of units in battle increases, the chance of you seeing Oriental Empires is very strange battle mechanics come into play increases too. And here we have one of the many potential issues you can face with that. In this case it's that our best unit, our noble axes, are chilling at the back while our spears are getting killed by the enemy spears at the front. It's only after our men die that the noble axes get in there and just annihilate the enemy spearmen. Luckily our unit just routed so it will come back into the fight if we win, and we are going to win now that the axemen are getting their acts together. I made the mistake of putting the axemen on outflank strategy, thinking our spears will lock the enemy in position and the axes can outflank the enemy, but in practice that's just not how it works. For example, here are the spearmen outflanking the enemy on their own. They're just on attack mode, whereas our axemen, who are on outflank mode, are setting up as if they want to outflank, but because there are many stages to the AI's process, it's just not that easy. They end up standing around and not being used. Finally, they charge into the fight and don't really get the outflanking attack I was looking for. They immediately give up on the fight and start standing around. <laughs> Some time later, they get back in there and victory is ours. I remember from my previous campaign playing this that I decided to never watch battles because they're quite frustrating, but I would also like to have a little bit of action in this campaign, so we'll take a look at any relevant battles and see how badly things are going for us. Anyway, with our army here we are going to be able to get rid of these bandits at some point, perhaps not with maximal efficiency, but it is going to happen. I'm playing around with the formations now, with the army going south, trying to make it so that the weaker units are in support mode and perhaps won't be right at the front when the fighting starts, so they stay alive longer. There's an enemy officer across the river, so I give the order to cross and attack him. Some spears appear from somewhere to support him, so we've got a little bit of a battle to get across the river, but I'm not sure if there's any sort of terrain penalty for the fact that our men are now fighting up to their chests in water, as you can see there. So we've got some Noble Axes fighting with their Noble Axes, this other squad is wandering by to go up the other bank and take on those spears, that's going to be a decent enough fight. We've got some spears going into support, others waiting at the back. When you give a unit the support order mode, 
they tend to only attack enemies that are very close to them, so some of our guys I think are out of aggro range and just won't take part in the battle, meaning that once again putting them on support was the wrong decision, if they were here they could be surrounding the enemy and helping out. Even without them though we're able to win those little fights and clear things up. And here we are back in the north, there was a battle going on at the same time, where my other army was trying to clear out more bandits, still waiting on those noble axemen to deal the decisive blow, they just like to queue up and take their time doing it. There it is. After doing a 270 degree circle around the enemy formation they eventually got in there and won the battle. The fight's still going down here at the river crossing, I think there are just a few nobles still alive, there they are. Now fighting with just one unit of my nobles, it's annoying that my one unit went on the offensive while the other ones are staying back here because we can't make simultaneous attacks, we're going to risk losing men in that leading unit. Luckily the enemy army totally routed and we won the field. Since we're now clearing things up in the north, I've recruited some more settlers. I want to take advantage of that nice looking plain off to the west. It's by the same river that my other settlements are by, so we can set up a river trading network and have a nice place for farming in and of itself over there if the settlers can get there alive. All we need to do is finish off the bandits to secure the area. Now here's me discovering that we can't attack Kwai Ji right now because you need archers to break through walls for whatever reason. This is just a rule of the game. So I'm not allowed to attack the town. All I can do is walk around the outside and loot their farms, which is a pretty good thing to do. We'll make a lot of money doing that. Handily, I'd actually just finished building the thing that lets you recruit archers, the bowyer. So we'll get a couple of units of peasant archers together, but it does mean we'll have to wait for them to make this long trek over difficult terrain to join the army before we can actually make an attack. And there is an enemy officer hanging about between Mei Li and the southern army. To react to this, I'm putting these guys on harass strategy. This I think works quite well from my experience. They tend to stay out of the fight if a fight starts, which is exactly what you want for an army that's just archers. Meanwhile, fighting still continues around Kwai Ji. The enemy have units here to try and stop us from looting their farms, but because we have the overall advantage, that's fine. We'll just hack them down and await our reinforcements, and it even gives us the chance to kill everything outside of the town rather than having to break into the town later while it's actually defended by melee infantry. Jumping back up north again, here I'm deciding where to put my new settlement, and you can see if you mouse over these icons, it tells you which of your other settlements it will be able to trade with if you put it on a certain tile, and if there are special resources nearby it tells you about that as well, it's a pretty handy feature, so we'll use that to scout out some good sites. And we'll also want to send some infantry up there to just scout that area in general, because for all I know, there's a massive empire just to my west that's going to attack me instantly as I settle the area. Back down south, more fighting taking place, just the enemy's last dribs and drabs fighting our men. No chance of victory for them, it's just men that routed earlier. So we'll clear these spearmen out with a quick fast forwarded battle, there they go. And now in the next turn we'll be able to give the orders for our men to go back across the river and link up with the archers who are making their way through the jungle and have managed to avoid actually having a fight with the enemy general that's hanging around there as well, so that's perfect. At this point I'm going to call an end to the first part of this abridged campaign. I think we've got off to a pretty good start here, with the trademark tragedies along the way as always, but I think from here we'll be building up an empire that will stand the test of time. We'll see if there are any rivals out there who want to challenge us on that of course. So do join me for future parts of the campaign if you want to see how it plays out. There'll be a playlist in the description once things get going. I don't think it will be a particularly long campaign from my vague memory of playing it before, but then again, I don't know what I'm talking about, as I've already demonstrated, making me the perfect commentator for this game. I'll see you next time!